Well, hello YouTube, you're with Got That Funk, and this is a video response to my friend Laura Lila, uh, at which it has been far too long, I think. Uh, she's had a series of questions that she wanted to share, and uh, she obviously did a video answering the questions herself, which I'll link in the below bar. And I'm going to have a go at answering these questions, and uh, we'll just see what, uh, what comes out. I haven't really given any of it very much thought, I just watched her video, copied the questions and pasted them, and now here we go, it's that simple. Uh, given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you have, who would you want as a dinner guest? Uh, well, uh, my daughter and son, uh, all my best friends, Jen, Miranda, Megan, and uh, Eve, uh, my mom, my siblings, my dad, and um, Rhonda, her husband, Kenny, Berkeley. I think that's uh, that'd be a pretty, uh, a pretty you know, uh, pretty nice time, uh, surrounded by all the people in the world that I love the most. So yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, would you like to be famous? In what way? Uh, well, the answer to that is not really exactly famous, no. Um, I used to want to be famous when I was younger, for sure. Uh, you know, I was a, a DJ on the radio for like nine years. And uh, in those days, I had high aspirations of becoming a six-figure DJ. And uh, had I not moved to the UK, I would have chased that dream with uh, extreme ambition. Uh, but uh, moving to this country sort of changed things around in that regard. It's a very long story, which I'm not going to reiterate here. Uh, but suffice to say, um, it also, moving to this country, changed my values anyways. And uh, I realized being famous is uh, not really necessarily going to give my life any added depth or meaning. So, yeah. But in what way? I, w I would have loved to have been a, a six-figure disc jockey on the radio and uh, attendant celebrity that that can often entail. Uh, certainly on the local level in the city that you're DJing in. Okay, uh, before making a telephone call, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Uh, no, I don't. I've never done that. I, I, I might like consider what I'm going to say before I say it, but I, I, I never rehearse it, like go over it sort of in my head or out loud or anything like that. What would constitute a perfect day for you? <laughs> Well, I'm satisfied with perfect moments. Uh, you know, an entire perfect day is almost inconceivable. Um, I'm sure if I was to have a perfect day, I'd have, uh, a, again, uh, family, friends, and you know, if it was perfect, I'd have a, a loved, you know, a lover in my life, and uh, for sure, and we'd probably be abroad somewhere, enjoying uh, someplace tropical and adventurous. I don't know, maybe Costa Rica or Thailand or something, Burma. I don't know, something. Anyway, uh, yeah, so. Uh, something exotic with all the people I care about uh, and, and, and someone significant in my life. Uh, a beautiful day, just enjoying where we are and, you know, each other's company. Uh, right. Uh, when did you last sing to yourself when, and someone else? Well, I last sang to myself probably today although I don't remember doing so, but the chances are good that I did, because I always do. And um, as far as singing in front of someone else goes, I, I almost never in my life sing in front of other people because I think I have a terrible singing voice. I sing like a cat or an elephant, and it's not good. So I wouldn't want to normally subject other people to it. Uh, the last woman I was sort of seeing last summer uh, she begged me many times to uh, read poetry to her and sing to her and all that, and I eventually relented on both counts. And uh, I've never done that for anybody before because I just hate the way it sounds when I sing. So yeah, um, but uh, so it's going to be a long time before that ever happens again because it was certainly a long time before, prior to that. In fact, I wouldn't probably be able to recall singing in front of other people prior to that quite some time. All right, I just got to scroll here. Hang on. If you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or body of a 30-year-old for the last 60 years of your life, which would you want? <laughs> well, that's a no-brainer to me. I'd want the body of a 30-year-old uh, because two reasons. 
number one, um, although 30 is, is, you know, you know, you're ripening pretty well when you're 30 for sure. Uh, but the mind aging is a good thing, not a bad thing, right? I, I certainly, uh, this has been an immense journey for me. And I would not want to be stuck where I was when I was 30 for 60 years. So to me, that, 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 that would be, uh, you're not really living. So especially if your body's going to get old anyways, and you're, you're not maturing along with it. So it's, yeah, whoa, uh, you know, that, that's, that, that just blows me away in terms of, th that would be horrible. Uh, so to have the body of a 30 year old and the wisdom of a, of a 90 year old is a good thing. Now, I suppose implicit in the question is, you know, that you might lose your marbles as you get older, if you make, make the choice to have the body of a 30 year old, but you know, not everybody loses their marbles when they get older. Although, you know, I do confess that such a thing is one of my greatest fears about aging. Uh, but, you know, we'll see what we see. Next question. Do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? Uh, no. Once, a long time ago, I, I, I had like a premonition sort of moment, but I was uh, on psychedelics at the time. But, yeah, I thought I was going to get shot in the chest. Not in the heart, but in the, the upper chest, just below my clavicle. Of course, that's just stupid. Next question, uh, for what in your life do you feel most grateful? Uh, well, I, I, everything, I, it's a bit hard to narrow it down. Uh, my mom, my kids, my siblings, um, my grandfather, for sure. Um, and I, I've been extremely fortunate insofar as the happy days outnumber the bad days by such a huge margin that uh, Sometimes when I have a bad day, I, I, I get pissed off at myself for having a bad day, not because it's bad and I'm, I'm not enjoying it, but just because, fuck, now I've got to start back over again <laughs> from one. Uh, anyway, yeah. No, they, 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 it, it, it's, you know, I, I'm lucky, you know. Uh, I have every reason to be grateful. If you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? Well, when I was being raised, I would have changed so many different things that uh, I, that could make a whole video. Uh, now that I've grown up and I've also been a parent, I'm not so sure it's uh, wise to change anything about the way one is raised. Specifically in my case, because part of the reason I raised my kids the way I raised my kids was because of the way I was raised myself. Which is not to say that I raised my kids the way I was raised. It's the opposite of that. Um, and I'm ex exceptionally proud of the results. I mean, my kids have grown up now and are both just, you know, this whole parenthood thing is the most immense, awesome experience in the world to me. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't change it for anything. So, yeah, I, I think I strayed a little bit uh, from answering the question, but there you go. Uh, I wouldn't change anything about the way I was raised because it informed how I decided to become a parent myself. Uh, if you could wake up tomorrow having gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? Well, oops, I scrolled too far. Um, it would be to be able to behave responsibly without feeling it a burden. <laughs> I suppose that would be it. Uh, sometimes I feel like I make a crap adult. And uh, I, I should just pull my shit together a little bit. Uh, and there you go. Next question. If a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? Well, I wouldn't want to know anything about myself or my life, but it says here the future or anything else. So I'm going to choose that. Uh, I, would, I would be fascinated to know what the ultimate fate of mankind is going to be. Uh, you know, do we just continue to evolve and, and, and become something else uh, in, you know, millions of years? Or is something going to happen to us that snuffs us out? And if so, what? You know, um... I was raised in the nuclear age, and so, you know, this is just something I've never been able to erase from my, my subconscious because I've given it so much thought over the course of my life. You know, what can I say? Anyway, um, is there something you've dreamed of doing for a long time? 
why haven't you done it? Uh, well, I keep trying. Uh, you know, I, I, I've always been searching for Ms. Wright, and, uh, and, and it doesn't work. So um, I've decided to take this year off, and uh, wish me luck, because that uh, historically isn't easy. On the other hand, uh, all I have to do is not try, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm a little minnow in a tiny, tiny, uh, in a, a tiny, tiny minnow in a great big ocean uh, in London. So I, if I don't try, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. I don't know how I got off on that. Oh my God. Whatever. This is supposed to be revealing, right, about oneself. So that's what we're doing, right? It's okay. What is the greatest accomplishment of your life? Well, I hate to keep reiterating myself, but my kids. Um, uh, my other personal accomplishments, uh, you know, are so far uh, beneath that that they don't really merit uh, mention in the same sentence. What do you value most in a friendship? Uh, basically, my friends are my friends because they lo love me for who I am. They don't expect me to change. They are fully aware of my faults. Uh, and uh, I treat them exactly the same way and because of that we have incredibly strong bonds and those bonds are magnificent so that to me is what it is you know it's it's, it's the general level of acceptance uh, which is the most important thing to me next question what is your most treasured memory um, well, I've got loads, and uh, they're all treasured for different reasons. Uh, my most, you know, the apex of my whole existence was when my daughter was born, and I held her for the first time. Uh, so that memory is uh, obviously probably my most treasured. But there's plenty of others that, uh, you know, that you know, where I was just astounded and overwhelmed that. Uh, you know, had I never been a parent, it would uh, be hard to choose among. Uh, what is your most terrible memory? Oh, God, I'm not sure. Um, fuck, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to give that some thought. I might have to edit this out of the video if I give it some too much thought. But uh, it might be more amusing for you guys to watch me try and come up with something. My most terrible memory. God. See, I don't really think about bad stuff too much. That's how I dealt with it. You know, it's like, okay, well, move along. Nothing to see here sort of a thing. Um, I suppose in my adult life, probably when I got beat up, um, you know, that was, a, that was a pretty bad day for me. So there. Next question. If you knew in one year you would die suddenly, would you change anything about the way you are living and why? Uh, you damn straight I would. Uh, yeah, I definitely would. Um, I would continue to work for a little while, but uh, I wouldn't work for the whole year. And uh, I would definitely want to uh, mend any bridges that were mendable if I could think of any. Um, I've been already doing that over the past 18 months anyways to the best of my ability and with uh, quite a bit of success but there's you know I, I, I always uh, it, it's my opinion that you know you don't want to swagger through life uh, leaving a trail of destruction behind you you know when you when you hurt people or when uh, you have misunderstandings or whatever it's better if you can to try to at least come to some sort of uh, understanding about it or whatever uh, or you know or you know bygones that's even better uh, so you know that kind of thing um, uh, I, I, I think I answered the question. I've already scrolled past it, so I'm going to have to move on. What roles do love and affection play in your life? Well, um, at the moment, as I said, I'm on a hiatus from uh, romance. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, at the moment, none. Having said that, in my life overall, it's, it's far too important to me. And uh, that importance ends up making me... Uh, put up with things I shouldn't put up with and make bad choices and all kinds of shit like that. So I have a complicated, uh, you know, head to, to work out when it comes to shit like that. Um, I, I, I absolutely adore having a partner and I adore adoring my partner. And uh, so, you know, when I'm involved, 
it is pretty much everything you know I, I begrudge every minute I'm not with my partner you know uh, it's you know I'm, it's it's all about it next question how close and warm is your family do you feel your childhood was happier than most other people's well I don't know how happy most other people's childhoods were um, uh, how warm and close is my family well you know I I revere my sister my mom uh, my kids um, I love my brother I love my dad you know I, but you know my mom and my kids and my sister are just like ah, to me you know <laughs> and uh, so to me uh, family is really important uh, having said that it's not like we keep in touch every week or anything like that you know we, we talk whenever we whenever we talk and uh, and whatever but um you know it's incredibly important to me uh, you know not just family but friendships as well you know the, the bonds that we share with one another as human beings and the experiences that we have as individuals and with others that's where it's at you know uh, once around the ride you know so you know let's hold hands and go <laughs> that's my attitude yeah the more the merrier how do you feel about your relationship with your mother well I think I've already made that clear so I don't have to go over that again I revere my mom I think she's one of the most amazing people in the world and uh, you know the fact that she uh, has continued to be for, there for me my entire life uh, is just immensely gratifying Okay, complete this sentence. I wish I had someone with whom I could share dot dot dot. Um, well, my future. There, that pretty much covers it. <laughs> but like I said, uh, taking the year off, fuck it. I cannot be bothered. Next question. If you were going to become a close friend with your partner, please share what would be important to him or her, for him or her to know. Well, I suppose that would be up to her. Uh, what she would consider important and uh, you know whether I thought it was uh, taboo or not which I seriously doubt I, I'm a pretty open person um, you know and I'm a sort of you know judge not lest you be judged kind of guy I mean I don't you know I, I don't mind hearing about my partner's past but I don't insist on it I don't care one way or the other I don't you know I don't we've all got a past I'm all about the future blah 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 so you know um, it's important that she knows that she can ask me anything she wants and I'll tell her that's what is important um, for sure and uh, it's also important for her to know how, uh, how, how tactile and affectionate I am because if someone's uncomfortable with a lot of contact which some people are and it's nobody's fault uh, but if that's the case you know I, I can't really uh, share my bed with someone like that that's for sure yeah anyway there we go um, share with your partner an embarrassing moment in your life well um, I don't really do embarrassment I think this is pretty well documented on the got that funk channel um, if I'm gonna talk about embarrassment I've got to go all the way back to when I was you know uh, adolescent I think I was about 15 I went to a roller skating rink uh, to do some disco skating and, and uh, strut my stuff and my fucking polyester and acetate you know and uh, yeah so I, I went out there I got my skates on and I went out there and I was dancing around doing my thing I was looking at my feet not paying attention and I looked up and everyone else on the floor was a girl and everyone on the sidelines was a guy and I was on the floor for girls only skate and there's about somewhere between 800 to 1000 teenagers there and uh, it was pretty fucking embarrassing and I think I was 15 at that time just about to turn 16 um, I can't really think of anything that was honestly embarrassing after that there's plenty of stuff before that though I, I, I did suffer from embarrassment a lot when I was younger for sure um, uh, fortunately I developed the, uh, the fuck it and once you develop the fuck it uh, you know uh, you're spared a lot of grief right uh, when did you last cry in front of another person by yourself well, in front of another person um, uh, I, I kind of teared up last night watching um, friends with benefits right at the end I know it's corny right but I, I kind of like oh you know and I, I, I didn't cry properly but I definitely welled up for sure and my roommate was right there I don't think he noticed though 
I hope he didn't notice. I didn't have the sunglasses on, so he might have noticed, but I don't think he noticed. I didn't have anything trickling down my cheek. I, I managed to keep it all in my ducts. So, yeah, I welled up pretty good then. As far as crying on my own, um, I, December the 12th, 2014, uh, I, I, I had to, I cried a couple times. Thank God I was on my own. Um, I hate crying. I, I'd rather bleed sometimes than cry. You know, I, I hate crying. Um, but when you're sad, crying is the appropriate response. And so if you're sad, cry. That's my philosophy. So fortunately, I was on my own at work, and uh, I, I did a bit of crying as I was upset by someone who I cared about. And um, yeah, uh, that was a fucking a shit day, really. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm not a stranger to crying. Sometimes music can do it to me. Uh, Beverly Knight in particular, I listen to her sing. Her voice makes me cry. She's a beautiful singing voice. Okay. What, if anything, is too serious to be joked about? Um, well, I think in principle, nothing is definitely is too serious to be joked about. But, um, sorry, this thing just went fucking haywire there for a second. Uh, having said that, uh, that doesn't mean there's such a thing as there's not such a thing as bad taste. Um, however, it is what it is, you know. Uh, I, I think if something is in bad taste, that's probably because it seems too serious, you know, to joke about. Uh, anyway, if you were to die this evening with no opportunity to communicate with anyone, what would you most regret not having told someone? Why haven't you told them yet? Well, I kind of deliberately, since my mid-twenties, to live my life uh, in such a way as to not let that happen. I, I make a point of telling all the people that I care about that I care about them on a regular basis. Not necessarily every time I see them or talk to them, but almost. You know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of, uh, you know, making sure you, uh, you're you good with your people, you know. So, um, yeah, I, as far as... Uh, I don't know. I don't have any secrets or anything like that that someone really needs to to hear about. Um, God knows I've already told everyone all my stories, so I, I think we're cool. Next up, your house containing everything you own catches fire. After saving your loved ones and pets, you have time to safely make a final dash and save any one item. What would it be? Why? Probably this laptop. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, it's got all my music on it. So, because I'd lose all my CDs, they'd go up in flames. So, it, you know, I couldn't carry them all in one, in one arm load. So, my laptop's got all my music on it. It's also got all my videos on it and so forth. So, yeah, my laptop. I hate to fucking say it because that just makes me sound like a victim of the 21st century. I suppose. Last question. Of all the people in your family, whose death would you find most disturbing and why? Uh, that's an unanswerable question. I can't quantify grief. Um, and, uh, you know, it's difficult to truly imagine how you feel. Uh, you know, even when you expect someone to die, be it a parent or elderly a loved one, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I find the question is almost invalid or I'm, I'm possibly even slightly put off by it. I don't know. It's just... I. You know, I'd be absolutely devastated if my kids died before I did. Either one of them. Um, my son almost died when he was 10. And uh, I had to contend with how I'd feel. And that was, uh, that was a pretty heavy pretty heavy experience in, in general. Uh, thankfully, obviously, he pulled through. Uh, he nearly died twice in the space of two weeks. So, yeah, it was a, that, was a, that was a hard fortnight for sure. So I have contended with this sort of possibility as a, as a definite probability even. Um, and it's, it's not fun. Having said that, uh, I'd be devastated you know, if my mom died. I'd be devastated if something happened to my sister or my nephew or my niece. Anybody really, you know. I, 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 I can't understand why you would want to sort of hold one person up above another as if their life has more meaning. Um, 
There you go. That's the last question, and that's my last answer. I want to thank you for this uh, opportunity. I'm sorry that this video has run on for so long. It's not the normal thing that I do here on this channel. I know I've had a lot of long videos lately, though, and I do apologize for that. I want to thank you for if you've uh, hung in all this time. And as usual, when we do a long video, uh, if you've watched until the end, leave a comment in the comment section. It says, Tommy from the Bronx is the motherfucking it. Thanks.